Okay guys, so let me take you on a small journey in time. But first, let's establish where are we located. So here you can see our observation point. So now we are looking at Western Jerusalem and we are backing towards the east. And soon we will arrive at our observation point from which I will begin the geography of Jerusalem. So welcome to Mount of Olives. And this is probably the best spot to understand the geography of Jerusalem. And I'm not talking only about the modern Jerusalem. I'm also talking about the ancient Jerusalem and its roots. So here you can see where the city of David is located. Because this is the beginning of Jerusalem. So let's look at it a little bit closer. Can you see the white stones? This is the ancient Milo, an amazing structure that was discovered. Here's a better view of it. And according to an archaeologist, Eliat Mazar, on top of Milo, the Palace of David stood. There are remains of a huge structure found on top of this. And here is my reconstruction of Jerusalem during David's reign. You can see where the Milo is and the Palace of David. Today, you can visit the city of David and travel in time thousands of years. It's an amazing museum and I highly recommend seeing it. It's very beautiful there, but also the history that you find here is amazing. Here's a close look at Milo again. We read about this amazing structure in 2 Samuel 5, 9. Here you can read the biblical reference to this amazing structure. One of the greatest attractions of the city of David are the ancient tunnels. Thanks to archaeology, we can finally understand how David conquered the great city of Jabez and created the capital of Israel. David's warrior, Joab, probably used one of those tunnels to enter the well-fortified city and conquer it for David. Before those tunnels were discovered, nobody really believed that this story is true. Today, you can travel those same tunnels and imagine this biblical story by yourself. But that's not all. You see, there is another tunnel built by King Hezekiah himself. It's a wet tunnel. And at the end of it, there is an amazing story. You see, King Hezekiah built this tunnel to transfer water from the Gehan Spring to the pools of Siloam. To protect the pool of Siloam and the rest of the city, King Hezekiah builds massive walls to survive the Assyrian invasion. Here's a brief history of Jerusalem walls. So first we have the walls of the original city of David. Then we have the walls that were created by King Hezekiah. And finally, we have the walls that we see today that surround the old city that were built in the 16th century. In the old city of Jerusalem, you can see parts of this wall built by King Hezekiah. But let's return to the Pool of Siloam. You see this big pile of dirt here? It's gone and they just started new excavations on the Pool of Siloam. So soon, we should be finding some really cool stuff here. Of course, the Pool of Siloam not only functioned in the times of Hezekiah, but also during the times of the Second Temple. Here you can see my 3D reconstruction of the Pool of Siloam and the Jerusalem in the first century. By the way, do you see a road going up to the Temple Mount? Yes, they have found it also. It's called the Pilgrim's Road, and they're doing a reconstruction of it in Jerusalem. Now we are moving from south to north, and what you can see is the Southern Temple Mount complex. And here you can see how it looks today. Below us is the city of David, and in front of us a true jewel of archaeology. On the right you can see the Mount of Olives. So let's go back to our original perspective so you can understand 
where this place is from the Mount of Olives. So here it is. This place is actually a huge archaeological park that you can visit yourself. Here you can see where it is located in reference to the Western Wall. When you enter this museum, you will be able to see huge stones that were thrown down from the Temple Mount on the 1st century street. Here you can see exactly where this pile of huge stones is located. This is a witness to the tremendous destruction done by the Romans to Jerusalem. In AD 70 this magnificent structure was destroyed. But there is more things you can find in the Davidson's archaeological park. So let's take a closer look. They found two gates that would lead to the Temple Mount. These gates are the famous Hulda gates that the pilgrims would take to get in and get out of the temple from the south. But they not only found the gates, but also the stairs that would lead people towards the temple. So can you imagine? These may be the very steps that Jesus took when he went up the temple. But let's talk a little bit about the geography. I'm pointing now to the Kidron Valley. The Kidron Valley is one of three main valleys around the ancient city of Jerusalem. Apart from the Kidron Valley you also have the Hinnon Valley and the Tyropian Valley. Together those three valleys shape the Hebrew letter Shin. Why is this significant? Well, because in the Bible we read that God will put his name in Jerusalem. But what does it mean? Maybe it's the geography. You see, the Hebrew letter Shin represents one of the titles for God, Shaddai. You can see this letter on the mezuzahs that the Jewish people put on the doorposts of their houses and gates. This comes from the commandment we read in the book of Deuteronomy. The mezuzah holds the most important commandment to the Jewish people, to love God with all your heart, soul and strength. No wonder therefore that if you will visit Jerusalem today, you will see plenty of mezuzahs all around. Here you can see my reconstruction of Jerusalem's topography. So is it possible that God has shaped this place to look like a letter shin? But let's talk now about the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is a giant graveyard, one of the oldest in the world, especially important to Jewish people. You see, the Jewish people believe that one day the Messiah will come here and a massive resurrection will happen. And by here I mean the Mount of Olives. This is referring to an ancient prophecy from the prophet Zechariah who says that one day the feet of the Messiah will touch the Mount of Olives. Then this mountain will split into half and a river will go through it to the Dead Sea. So to give you a perspective, here is Mount of Olives. Now imagine a river going through the Mount of Olives, giving life to everything on its path, including the Dead Sea. Here is a nice view on the Dead Sea from the Mount of Olives. When there is a good weather, you can actually see the Dead Sea from the Mount of Olives. But there is more to Mount of Olives than we even realize. You see, the Mount of Olives creates a line between death and life. Everything that is east to the Mount of Olives is dead and everything that is west to the Mount of Olives is alive. This is a powerful symbol and a reminder of the future events that will take on Mount of Olives. Our next point of interest, the Golden Gate. I'm pointing to it right now. This is the only gate to the Temple Mount from the east. So let's have a closer look at the Golden Gate. The gate is sealed and you can approach it from both sides. The Temple Mount side, which is from the western side and the inside of the gate, and from the east. You can go there from the Lion's Gate through the Muslim Cemetery. So here you can see me walking up to the Golden Gate. So why is this gate sealed and why is there a cemetery in front of it? The eastern gate was ultimately sealed shut in 1541 by the Ottoman Sultan Suleiman. However, 
pure to this time, the gate was closed in 810, also by the Muslims, then reopened in 1102 by the Crusaders and then walled up again by Saladin, the first Sultan of Egypt and Syria and the founder of the Ayyubid dynasty. The gate itself is a mosaic of history and some parts of it go back to the first temple period. Front of the gate, and this is what we see when we look at it today, is from the Turkish times. But beneath it, there are some parts that are from the first and second temple period. On this drawing done by Lynn Rittmeyer, you can see a staircase. It is in orange. This is from the Herodian times. Today you can't see what is under this golden gate. But in 1969, Dr. James Fleming, an archaeologist, dug into the Golden Gate and found an arch underneath it. Here's my reconstruction of the Second Temple and the Golden Gate. Do you see a staircase on my model? This is the staircase that Dr. James Fleming found under the modern Golden Gate. And so the Golden Gate today is rested on ancient foundations. But that's not all. Around the Golden Gate, we can even find parts that are even older than the Herodian staircase. Inside the Golden Gate, there are ancient beams that go back to the first temple period. Also, around the Golden Gate, there are stones that date back to the first temple. Amazing. Do you know what this means? This means that this gate is located where the original Golden Gate was built. Some even argue that this gate, the stones around it, date back to the original Temple of Solomon. So the gate goes way back, but it also has a very important prophetic significance. You see, the book of Ezekiel records very important information concerning the Golden Gate. The prophet records that when Israel departed from the Lord, God also departed from them, leaving Jerusalem through the Eastern Gate. The prophet, however, also writes that in the future, when a new temple will be built, something amazing will happen. The glory of God will return, entering through the Eastern Gate. And remember the river going through the Mount of Olives into the Dead Sea? This is when it's gonna happen. And it's gonna transform the whole region into something amazing. There will be life coming out from Jerusalem through a river that will be transforming everything to life. An amazing future, isn't it? But let's continue our observation from the Mount of Olives. From the Mount of Olives, you can also see several churches. Those churches are connected to specific events or people from the New Testament. The first church we'll talk about is the one with the Golden Domes. This is the Church of Mary Magdalene, a well-known Russian Orthodox Church. It was built in 1886 by Tsar Alexander III of Russia in honor of his mother, Empress Maria Alexandrovna of Russia, and is dedicated to Mary Magdalene a follower of Jesus. The church features seven golden onion domes and is built in a traditional Russian style. Mary Magdalene is a significant figure in Christianity, recognized as a close follower of Jesus. She is mentioned several times in the New Testament, particularly in the relation of her presence at the crucifixion and her discovery of Jesus' empty tomb. Next, we have the Catholic Church Dominius Flavit. You can enter this church as you walk down the Mount of Olives. Here is the gate to the church. Dominus Flavit translates the Lord wept in Latin. The church was completed in 1955 and is shaped like a tear of Jesus. And so the church remembers the very famous event of Jesus weeping over Jerusalem as he knew that it will be soon destroyed. While the church itself is relatively modern, the site it sits on is of significant archaeological interest. During construction, 
ancient tombs and artifacts dating back to the Canaanite period were discovered, indicated that the Mount of Olives has been a site of human activity for thousands of years. On the territory of this church, you can also see a very nice collection of ossuaries. Those are typical Kohanim graves of the period 100 BC to AD 135. The dead were buried in a narrow horizontal shafts and later their bones were collected in a beautifully made stone boxes, ossuaries, in order to make room for others. On the ossuaries, 43 inscriptions were found that contained names familiar to the readers of the New Testament, like Yeshua, Aramaic for Jesus, Miriam, Mary, Martha, Eliezer, Lazarus, Judas, Salom, Matthew, Joseph, Jairus, John, Matthias, Sapphira, Menachem, Simeon, and Zachariah. That doesn't mean that those are the actual characters from the New Testament, but it shows that their names were quite common. If you continue this road, you will eventually arrive to the place which is traditionally held to be the Garden of Gethsemane. As you enter this place, you will see some of the oldest olive trees in Jerusalem. Those trees were tested and the results are astonishing. Those trees are over a thousand years old. Gethsemane is derived from Aramaic Gatsmane, meaning oil press. And it's quite possible that in this location an oil press was located. And the name is not random. You see, according to the New Testament, it is in this location that Jesus suffered a lot. He had his agony and he was squeezed like an olive in an olive press. But there is more symbolism here. Look at this tree. Do you see new olive branches growing out from the old trunk? This is another picture from the New Testament where Apostle Paul writes that the Gentiles are grafted in into the olive tree. Thanks to this unity, now the Gentiles also can enjoy the life-giving properties of the olive tree. You see, the olive tree has an amazing ability to survive. If the roots of the olive tree are healthy, the tree will survive. So you can cut the tree to the ground, you can even burn it. But if the roots are healthy, it will survive. And it seems that the roots of the trees in the Garden of Gethsemane are healthy and they were able to survive thousands of years. Next to the Garden of Gethsemane, you have the Church of the Nations or the Basilica of Agony. It's called the Church of the Nations because many nations took part in building this church. In this location, you will also find the rock upon which it is believed that Jesus prayed before he was arrested and crucified. And it's quite symbolic that also upon this rock, the church is created. We now move from the Church of Nations to the Chapel of Ascension at the top of Mount of Olives. The chapel is part of a larger complex consisting first of a Christian church and monastery and then an Islamic mosque. It is located on a site traditionally believed to be the earthly spot where Jesus ascended into heaven after his resurrection. It houses a slab of stone believed to contain one of Jesus' footprints. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Mount of Olives. If it's the case, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also support the channel by becoming a patron. I'm leaving a link to the patron page for you to check out. You'll find the link in the description of this video. If you enjoyed the 3D renders, I am also setting up a shop on my patron page so that you can purchase them if you like them. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to my Facebook page. On the Facebook page, I post additional renders and art 
that you can find interesting. I will leave a link to the Facebook page also in the description of this video. You don't like Facebook? No problem. I also have an account on X, so you can subscribe there and follow me from there. This can help you to stay up to date. I'm leaving a link in the description. So once again, thank you for watching and I wish you a good day and Shalom from Jerusalem.